<laughs> it was the most widespread, most destructive racial violence in American history. White people driving through the riot area were considered fair game, whether young or old, men or women. Their cars were battered, the drivers stoned, kicked and beaten, and the cars were burned. The mobs might groan and curse in disappointment when a white got away, and then cheer like a football crowd when a car went up in flames. Okay. The burning and looting, the shooting and beating went on for nearly a week. It began as many race riots have begun with the arrest of a Negro by white officers, right here at this corner. In this case, two young Negroes were stopped by California Highway Patrolmen and charged with drunk driving. There was a scuffle and a crowd gathered. The mother of the two, they are brothers, joined in, and she and another woman the crowd thought was pregnant were pushed and shoved. Over and over, Negroes repeat the charge of police brutality. One who had pressed a number of brutality complaints and one of the most successful attorneys in Los Angeles is a Negro, Leo Branton. We asked him about the police claim that brutality charges are fully and fairly investigated. Well, in theory, there are avenues of complaint open. But there are no meaningful avenues uh, uh, to redress the grievances of these people. I've tried them all, and I can say to you that there is no question but that under the present machinery as it exists and that is, as it is being operated today, a complaint of police brutality by any Negro citizen goes almost completely unheeded. The first thorough study of Negroes and how they live in this country was completed only a few months ago. Our government, which conducts detailed surveys of everything from sugar beets in Colorado to social habits in Cambodia, had never before taken a close look at the 21 million Negroes of America. Daniel Moynihan, until this summer, Assistant Secretary of Labor, was in charge of the study and was staggered by it. Moynihan says the Negro family structure is collapsing, and we asked him the reasons. The first is, remember, that American slavery was the worst slavery the world has ever known. We can't get that into our heads because the standard of living of the slaves was high, perhaps. We don't think, we don't see how awful it was. We deprived them of the sacraments as Christians. We deprived them of the, any institution of family life. We deprived them of any rights as human beings. There's a very long and complicated history, but we did. There's no other slavery like it in history. And there was no Negro family at all in, in the slave world. Secondly, segregation and the great humiliation of Jim Crow was a, was a brutal assault on the personal integrity of the Negro male. I mean, he was the man who took the brunt of it. Although he denied to the police any part in the looting and rioting, he took me on a tour of some of the places he said he helped to burn, as casual as a stroll in the park. I threw the firebomb right in the front window, right in the front window. A friend of mine went in the store towards the back and threw a firebomb in the back, and the place went up in flames. But it was pretty well uh, emptied by the looters and so forth. There isn't much left, is there? There is. A, here's a burned-up shirt and so forth that could have been gotten, could have been used. But most things were taken out before you burned. As much as we could possibly get then that we would decide to burn, and the cry in the streets was, burn, baby, burn. So Why would you burn out this kind of place? We decided to burn this store because we felt that this man hadn't been doing nothing but gaming on us anyway. So serious and explosive is the situation, says the commission, that unless it is checked, the August riots may be only a curtain raiser to what could blow up one day in the future.